Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio. And I'm Jim Hobbs. And to my left or right is my co-host, Mr. Brian Damage Forsyth of Kicks. And speaking of kicks, you guys got a show tomorrow night, don't you, Brian? Yes, we do. <laughs> and, uh, and where's that going to be? It is, let me see, now I should know the name of this place. It, it's near Baltimore. It's north of Baltimore. Okay. I think it's called, oh, what is that? Forest Hill or something? The area. It's some kind of ranch, something ranch. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I'm going to try to Google it real quick just so we can tell people. As you can tell, I'm well informed. <laughs> <laughs> as long um, as you know how to get there. Well, it's in, it's in my calendar and, it, you know, I, I put it, I write everything down. And then, then I transfer it to my Waze app at some point so I can find it. Do you, I tell you what, I love ways. Uh, I love using ways to get to point A to point B and tell me where the police are. Yeah, it's very, oh, here, I, I just opened my calendar. It, it's called um, Rasa, Rasa Ranch Saloon. I guess that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> but it's sold out. Awesome. Now, can people get tickets or is it sold out? It's sold out? Okay. It is sold out. Well, the people who got their tickets, they can expect a really... Now, is it an outdoor show? No, it's indoor, but it's like a, um, a, the club holds 400, so they only sold 200 tickets. But they went quick. Well, I'm sure it's going to be nice to get... I'm sure, I'm sure they did. That's your backyard, and people in Maryland love kicks so for them to be able to get out there so 200 lucky people is going to be able to hear their favorite band tomorrow night and so congratulations to you 200 people and maybe maybe there'll be more shows here in the distant future or for people to be able to attend and oh. anything on the horizon brian or are we still looking at 2021 i mean there's still some stuff on the calendar at the end of the year but um you know it seems like every time you get closer to it, it, it ends up getting moved. So, you know, nothing's for sure. But, um, you know, like this, this show popped up kind of out of nowhere, because uh, whatever else we, we were doing before got moved. So, you know, there's little things here and there that seem to pop up. And, and in fact, somebody reached out to me today um, on my Facebook musician page the, like I rarely check those those um those messages but I just happened to check today and, and there was some guy asking about how how to get a hold of whoever books kicks so I had to send I sent him our booking agents all his info I guess he's got some kind of place somewhere in Pennsylvania I forget where he said but I think it's a, at an airport or something that he does concerts so wow okay well, that would be a, a dueling uh, sound noise uh, competition. See who's louder, well, your, your martial amps or the, uh, the jetliners. Well, I don't know if it's an active airport. Or what, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure what the situation was. I just passed on the info, let, him, let, let our agent deal with it. <laughs> I know you and I were talking earlier about the, the drive-in concerts that are going on across the country. And the way you were explaining to me, the, I haven't attended one, but the fact that you were telling me that the cars have – are able to get out and they got a space in front of the car or around the car that people can gather up and be in their little private area. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I haven't seen it, but uh, yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine that had just done one, I guess last weekend or something. And, and uh, yeah, he said it's a, each car has a little area around it that they, um, and they, you know, they get out of the car and they have folding chairs and they sit out there kind of like, you know, and we used to do that at drive-ins actually when I was a kid. Was it the drive-in back in the days where you could, uh, if I remember, because it's been a long time since I've actually went to a drive-in, but I remember some friends of mine, or their, I should say friends, my friend's parents had a station wagon, mm. and I think they charged per person of in your vehicle. And I remember they would make us lay down and put a blanket over us, right. and it'd just be the, the two of them, and we have like four kids underneath this blanket, 
waiting in line. And sometimes I remember you couldn't breathe. They're like, oh, God, I hope they hurry up and get through this <laughs> gate so we can get up and get air. I'm going to die here. But uh, yeah, I remember I remember riding in a few different trunks. Yeah. Getting in yep. the trunk of the car, me and a few people. Or one time we, uh, the band was playing. This was way back in the shoes days. We were playing at a club in Leonardtown, Maryland, where we played, um, was it six nights a week? We, we'd be there the whole week. So I forget why we had a day off. I, for some reason, we had time off, and we, and we went to a drive-in, like the whole band, and we were in Ronnie's van. So before we got there, it was me and the drummer, the, our old drummer. Right. And, um, we climbed in the back door because Ronnie had like a bed built in there. But if you open the back doors, you, there's a space to crawl underneath. <laughs> so we had to crawl under there to get in, and we all got in. We all, I think we went to see Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke or something. <laughs> <laughs> Cheech and Chong, boy, that's a, that was a great movie back in its day. I yeah. still remember that. Wow. Yeah, drive-ins. Actually, I think drive-ins are going to probably make a comeback now considering what Thank we're you. dealing with in 2020. It and I don't think that's a I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I used to love those. Yeah, I remember that that the concession stands would be pumping that smell of that hot buttered popcorn and then they you know the that big bucket of popcorn on that giant screen and uh that the only thing back then of the day which that that crappy sound system that you stuck onto your side of your car to listen to the movie you know, I, I can imagine these days you probably could just pipe it right through your uh, Bluetooth on your vehicle. Uh, well, yeah, or, they got to that point where you could tune it in on your radio. But now I'm, I'm sure it, it would be more advanced than that. Yeah, because back in the day, I just remember that little gray box thing and the wire and sticking it on the window. Yeah. And, it's and then people, crack. Would, <laughs> the people would forget and drive away with it. <laughs> rip it the cord. Yeah, rip. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, back in the day. But how heck that would be pretty cool to have to be able to, to have a movie, a concert, and then a cookout. Oh yeah. So yeah. So maybe maybe investing in a drive in's not a bad idea to uh to to, to do that. Hmm. Now 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 my brain's thinking. <laughs> Smoke's coming out of my ear. So Let's talk about what project, food projects you got going on this week. What, uh, what have you been cooking this week, Brian? Well, uh, well, Ronnie was here earlier in the week, so I've been cooking for him. My last like project was uh, probably that rack of ribs, but um, I was working on a um, what you call it, a uh, the big the tomahawk, the big tomahawk steak, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Brontosaurus burger, three inch thick. Um, was it three and a half pounds? <laughs> it was humongous. And now, how did you cook that? Did you to tell everybody how did you cook a three and a half pound piece of meat? Well, first I smoke it on the smoker at a low temperature, like two twenty five, and it took a long time. It took way longer than I had planned because, um, you know, normal steak, you know, it takes maybe a half hour or something. This was like. I was like, come on, I'm waiting for the temperature to get up. So I, I, I bring the internal temperature up to uh, 115, I think is when I pulled it off. And then I, uh, and then I crank up the, the grill. Up while, while the steak's resting, I crank the grill up to 500, and then I throw it back on there. And I did it mm, three-ish three, three -ish minutes aside. That one probably, I could have probably cooked a little longer on each side because it was thick. And it was still rare. I was bleeding, <laughs> but it was still super tender. Oh, so good! Well, I remember, eat, and I didn't eat the whole thing, by the way. So you, you still got a pound left over for 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 breakfast for an omelet oh, tomorrow? At least a, it's probably half of it, a pound and a half, or yeah, something like that. Now, you, now on those tomahawks, do you use the bone? Do you save the bone, and and and, or you just throw the bone away? Oh no, I save it for bone broth. Okay. Yeah, because that's a big, that's a, a huge, I mean, that picture you sent me earlier today, that thing was huge. <laughs> yeah, you could kill somebody with that. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a weapon in probably half the states in our country. 
So what else? So what else is going on? What else is happening? What what's what what? Where do you want to stretch yourself, and and uh, what new recipes do you have on the horizon, or do you have any? Oh uh, yeah, next week I'm going to try something new, just just to see. Um, I'm going to attempt to do a cheesecake, like a carnivore cheesecake, which is totally possible because I'm going to use um, I'm using pork panko for the bread the crust. Okay. There's a recipe to, to make the, oh, sorry, let me turn this thing off. A recipe to, um, you can make the graham cracker crust out of pork panko. And then, uh, and then the rest is just cream cheese. So, uh, you know, if I, it depends on how much I want it, how sweet I want it. I, you know, I can put a little of the, the artificial sweetener in there. But, uh, yeah, I just want to try it because, that, you know, that, that, that cheesecake that cheesecake on your birthday uh, last week got you craving a little bit more huh well it, it sparked the idea and then i started <laughs> seeing some other people cooking some keto stuff like pies and i thought huh i bet i could do a cheesecake you know it'd be really easy we have i don't know if peggy's made one of those yet she does a she does a keto pecan bar uh that are that's really really good and blondie bars which are really really good they're both keto we only make those on the holidays when we go to somebody's house for thanksgiving or christmas we know we got a dessert that we can share but we also got a, a dessert that's safe for us to eat right yeah. um, so we don't we don't kick them around or else i'd be eating them all the time um, <laughs> right if, you know i do know my limitations and i have them around all the time would not be good for me i know that so we don't make them but it'd be interesting to see how your cheesecake turns out. Cheesecake is actually one of, one of my favorite desserts. Cheesecakes and pecan pie are probably my two favorite desserts. Oh. Um, so it's always tough when you go to buy uh, in Costco and they got the, the giant humongous cheesecake just sitting there. And the, I, I always have to walk, walk by it. And then I walk by, then I'll pick it up and I just look at, read the ingredients. And then I go, oh, okay, poison, poison, poison. All right, I'm good. And once I, once I realize I'm able to rationalize that it's just poison and it's meant for me to, to, to be a bait for me to, to want to buy it because it wants to kill me, I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with walking away from it. I mean, that's really what I have to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, that, that's where the knowing what the ingredients mean, uh, comes in handy yeah and you know talk about ingredients i think i was talking to you before and i was actually reading this article on pemmican and for those out there who may not know what pemmican is it's the original fast food that lasted a long time and it's what the natives uh used to do to kind of give you an understanding of what it is uh, pemmican was a portable food made out of pounded meat and fruit bound together with melted fat. It was often packed for long journeys or hunting expeditions, but people who didn't have Yetis yet, uh, so therefore did not need refrigeration. And if you think we're advanced, in 2019, a successfully preserved pemmican and grain mixture from a 1906 U.S. Army emergency ration pack was safely eaten. So I don't know who the guy volunteered for that job to sit there and go, hey, I'll try it. But unrefrigerated pemmican like maple syrup, peanut butter, and honey does not rot because of how low the water content is. So like, yeah, it's like dry. Yeah, it's like jerky. It's just dried. So they say that you, uh, if you don't want to make your own pemmican, you can buy some buffalo and cranberry taco bars uh, bites or sticks from the Ogala Locata Drive or Pine Ridge Reservation, South Dakota. So you can, they actually sell them online. You can buy them. And uh, I have not seen how much carbs are in it, but I'm, I mean, with, um, they may have some that are carb friendly, but the ones that I'm seeing with the maple syrup and the, the berries. Can you mention wheat too? It's got, uh, let's see, they, um, they got the recipe they're showing you on this one is start with a lean antelope meat and bacon fat, hang thin slice of meat on a uh, Pam sprayed oven rack, dried meat and cranberries are ready to grind, meat, fruit, 
and spices are assembled. Grind the meat and fruit separately. Good drying helps produce a good grind. Add melted but not super hot fat to the meat and fruit. Pour the mixture into a wax paper container. Pat smooth, let cool, and store for later. Oh, okay. I don't know if I, I'll see if I can't bring it up. I don't know if people can, let me, um, let me take the screen off for a second. I'll let everybody see that so they can see it. I'll stop it for a second so people can see. Oh, yeah. Well, if it's got fruit and uh, maple syrup in it, it's the... Yeah, it's definitely not good, not keto or carnivore friendly. Because you can probably but, make it without that stuff. Yeah. That's probably just to sweeten it up a little. I mean, if you just did the meat and the bacon fat, mm -hmm. I think you're probably, you know, good to go. At, well, I guess it just goes from pemmican then to just jerky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's a it's a it's amazing you know what you can do we actually uh for everybody that uh, is tuning in tonight we actually were going to have a very we were going to have a special guest and for whatever reason uh scheduling conflicts wasn't able to join us tonight but he's someone we will have on the show he's actually been doing keto and fasting for two weeks and in those two weeks he's already lost 14 pounds so i'm interested to have him on the show so he can tell his story and then share with people what motivated him to, to start keto and more importantly, how's he feeling the fact that he dropped 14 pounds in two weeks. So we will have him on the show uh, in the next few weeks. We got a bunch of other guests coming on board as well. Uh, we're bringing Mary back. And for those of you who watched her program, it's probably one of our most watched uh, podcasts. She's going to be coming back joining us, and we're really going to be talking about how to use food to boost your immune system and how to strengthen yourself, especially in this COVID-19 uh, world that we live in. So she's going to give some uh, great information. So she'll be coming up either next week or the week after. So make sure you, you tune in because we've got some great guests coming in the month of October, uh, not to mention just a lot of great content coming your way. So keep sending those uh, keep sending those emails because the testimonies that we're receiving from you know you who are watching and 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 what this show means to you totally keeps us driven to keep bringing you content that we all can learn from, including ourselves. I mean, there's not a guest that we haven't had on that I haven't walked away going feeling more encouraged and 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 knowing the mission of getting the the message out there that food is fuel and that we are our best physician and to be able to take our body seriously and don't leave the health of our body into the hands of uh, big pharma or to the uh, the big food chain uh, that markets strictly to get you to buy to take the bait so from for me speaking, I just, you know, I'm driven to help you guys help me as we keep helping you. So it's truly a true community in doing this. So, yeah. I know the last week's show, when everybody was able to jump on live and, you know, please send us an email. We would, I know I would, we would love to find a way to be able to do more live shows. I know we still want to do the keto uh, fest or keto seminar in person so we can get together share some information have some great speakers and and really get to know um, firsthand like the science behind why keto works or carnivore works and and to hear some facts from from some doctors and and, and so you guys are equipped with the information so when your mom or dad or spouse or brother or sister or best friend says you know, if you eat that three and a half pound tomahawk, you're just asking for a heart attack. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so you can respond to them, you know, in a kind, courteous way and let them know that, you know, I learned something from you, Brian, that response to say, no, I eat this way. So I don't have a heart attack. Yeah. That's a, that's a perfect response. And one that I will definitely use when people, you know, ask all the time, which they do. Uh, well, 
Don't, yeah. or they, they, yeah. they also go your cholesterol. That's the other one, the cholesterol and the heart attack. Yeah, I was just going to say that. They always go, how's your cholesterol? I'm like, perfect. And, yeah, that's, huh? and I, use ahead, that same, I use that same line for cholesterol too. It's like, I, you know, I eat this way to, to keep my cholesterol in line because it's, it, you know, otherwise it's um, upside down if you eat the other way. <laughs> yeah, there's so many people out there. We, uh, Peggy and I, was, we have some friends. They all have birthdays. They're all Libras and we, we, we took them out for a boat ride and, and lunch yesterday. And, you know, it's amazing. They're, they're like, man, you guys look so good. And it's amazing to me that you share with them what they could do to, to be able to live that lifestyle. And it's really that, the, you know, it's the, it's the subtle difference. There used to be a, uh, a book that I read, that's probably 25 years ago. It was called, I think it was called The Slight Edge. And The Slight Edge was saying that, to be successful or to achieve any goal, it's really not much different than what you're doing now. It's just a slight difference in the same thing that you do. And by uh, changing it, by modifying just a little bit, the results can totally change. And it's just like, you know, driving through a, a, a McDonald's or a Hardee's or a Wendy's or a Burger King and, and buying a hamburger you know, just take the bun off. Don't put their their sugar ketchup on it. But you know, you know the great thing about Hardee's is they they do lettuce wrap burgers. You can get them to be carb friendly. They put them in a bowl and lettuce and and just mayo and and tomato. And you know, just by eliminating that bread, you've eliminated the trigger as well as what's going to help spike your sugar. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just eliminating the bread. Now your mind, your mind's going to go, but I can't eat a hamburger without the, the bread. It's, it's, that's what makes it. Right. I, I truly, I understand that. I used to say the same thing, but the reality of it is that's just your mind, not you. The real you will be totally satisfied with eating the hamburger and the lettuce and the mayo by itself without the bread and you will feel much better. And just by making that slight change, you'll be surprised at the results that it will give you, that you'll achieve. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I relate to that. Um, you know, you get in a habit of eating things a certain way and you think, well, if I take that off the, you know, like back when I used to eat like fries and stuff, I go, you know, um, what was that, what would I say? Um, you know, I had to have ketchup on my fries. It's got right. like, that's, that's like eating cake with no, no frosting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you look at stuff like that, even coffee, you know, people get used to their coffee a certain way. And if you have to take something out of it, they're like, they freak out over it. But um, that's, that's one thing I've learned on this journey is like how easy it is to adapt to a new way of doing it. And, 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 tasting it in a different way too. I mean, food tastes completely different when you strip it down. Like you're actually tasting the food and not, not the stuff you're dumping on top of it, you know? And, and same with coffee. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I learned to drink black coffee early on, being on the road, because a lot of times we'd have coffee, like a coffee maker in the dressing room. And, <laughs> And you'd get there and there wouldn't be any cream or sugar or they'd be like sweet and low or some horrible sweetener. And you go, oh, man, I might as well just not even have the coffee. <laughs> you know, that kind of attitude. But, but I, finally, I finally thought, you know, if I could learn to like it black, then I wouldn't, it wouldn't matter if there was nothing to put in it, you know. So that's right. why I started drinking it black because then, then I could just enjoy it black and not feel like I'm losing out, you know, or missing out. No. Totally true. I, I, I remember I, I, I love seafood and, and I was born on the beach and, and loved re going to the beach. And I always have fried shrimp, fried oysters, fried clams, fried fish. And, and I just love it because, you know, not knowing that I, I'm loving it because there's a formula in there that's keeping me addicted to that, that fat, that frying. And I'm really just taking the bait. I'm poisoning myself 
And now, the, I mean, it, and, it, and if you're listening to this, this is where I was. The reality of it was I was addicted to the, the batter and the, what it was fried in because if you're honest with yourself, you cannot taste the shrimp, the clams, the, the, you cannot actually taste the food which is being fried. So when you start to have it steamed or, or raw oysters or, or, or steamed oysters or steamed shrimp, you literally are tasting the food in which you say you like. And, you know, so you, you put a fried Twinkie and a, and a, and a, and a and fried fish and a fried shrimp, it's going to taste pretty much the same because you're really just digesting the oil um, from that, that coating, from that batter. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, 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 you know, putting, it's putting that in your body you know, for, so for me, you know, I used to have breakfast. I told everybody that breakfast used to be my favorite meal of the day. And I'm talking about breakfast, truly breakfast at 6 a.m. in the morning, then having another mid-morning snack and then lunchtime. And, you know, you think about, you know, fried eggs with hash browns and toast with butter and, and, and bacon. And then you have, and then by 10, 30, 11 o'clock, you're, you're craving something else. And then you have fried chicken with potato salad and it just goes on and on and on and on when the reality of it is I can still have my eggs and bacon. I can still have my butter. I can still have my chicken and I can have cauliflower uh, potato salad. There's, there's, there's always a fix just by changing. But Brian is absolutely correct. I started to notice what food really tastes like and you don't really notice that how much sugar is in everything until you get away from it. And then you are able to taste it. So you, you taste something, go, ah, there's sugar in this. Even if it's just a little amount, you taste that sweetness in it. Yeah. And it's funny. You lose the taste for the sweetness. Cause now it's like, when I eat something sweet, I'm like, ah, you know, it's like, it doesn't appe appeal to me anymore. Like it used to. I mean, I used to love sweet stuff, but uh, yeah, now it's just kind of, ah, I'd rather taste something salty than sweet now. Yes, yeah. we took, it, we we had uh, for the birthday Libras uh, yesterday. We had got them a big uh, 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 pancake or not pancake. What's the uh, the big square cake layer cake from Costco? And you know, had all and I used to love Costco's birthday cake. So that icing, I just loved it. And now I look at it and they're all happy and, and having it. But I, I look at that icing and I get sick. I mean, I literally get sick just looking at the icing. Like I go, oh, I cringe. Oh, I know. That's, yeah. I, yeah. Those big square cakes. I used to yes. love those things too. And, and I'd always go for the corner piece if I that's could. Mine. Yes. That's mine. Yes. <laughs> you that's, have the, the most frosting on it. <laughs> yeah. And the big balloons on it, with all, which is nothing more than icing and that all that white curly well, stuff on the corner and, and and the and and i'm with you brian the corner piece is always my favorite piece yeah. i like i want the corner piece but i looked at it yesterday and i'm like oh <laughs> yeah because you know what it's going to make you feel like if you did eat it yeah and the problem is and that's the sad part when i look back in those days where i would partake it's like it would just trigger something in me. Like I just could not eat one piece of that cake. As sweet as it is, yeah. I would just want more and I would be so stuffed. But my brain was like, no, 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 we can eat more. That we, we like this. We like this taste. We like the sensation. Eat more, eat more. Yeah. I eat it until I started feeling nauseous. Then I'd stop. <laughs> right. I mean, there was many a days and many of evenings that I ate to the point where my stomach felt like it was way out here. And I was like, I'm waddling to, to, to get to my bedroom. <laughs> And I, I feel like I'm just, I, I feel sick. I feel like I, I'm just, I'm going to die. And to do that day in and day out or do it weekly, it's just, you I look, will die. <laughs> you, right. So yeah, it's kind of funny now that, you know, food no longer has that hold on me. And now people are like going, man, aren't you worried about a heart attack or cholesterol? And you're like, yeah. are you kidding me? I, you would, you should have said that back when I was eating the layer, the, uh, the, the, the cake from Costco with all that icing on it, two or three pieces or the, but that's normal. <laughs> right. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the reality is people have stuck with that. That is normal. 
and the number of people, I should say this, but Peggy and I went to the party store to buy uh, party uh, uh, products for the, for the birthday ladies. And in the part, party co, there's a section that's nothing but candy, selling 10 pieces of candy for a dollar. It's bubble gum and, and, and pure sugar pills, all kinds of different things. And the number of people who were around in this aisle, I mean, they probably were close, if not 300, 400, 500 pounds. And the whole family, the kids were chubby. They're all, and they're all sitting there with these bags of getting this, getting this candy. And it just, it saddened my heart because those kids are just, that's what they've grew up in. And, and they're just an addict because of the sugar has made them an addict. They're, they are addicted to the sugar and I understand where they are because I was definitely there with them. I, I would have been right there with them 20 years ago. Uh, but it's just so sad to see an entire family living that way, just knowing how unhealthy they are. And, and, they, how, don't, and they don't even realize what they're doing to themselves. That's yeah, and they don't realize what they're doing to their children. They think they're loving their children when the reality of it is they're just they're, they're, they're poisoning their children. And, and that's because they just don't know. Yeah. So it, it really is, you know, it's just, it's just so sad. And that's why, regardless of where you are on this journey, whether you just started out or, you know, whether you've been trying for three years or three months and, you know, you keep having setbacks, you know, just, just let the setback, don't let it, don't let it define you. Just let the setback be a learning experience. Learn from that setback. I mean, really look in the mirror and find out, hey, why did I do that? And, and don't beat yourself about it. Use it as a learning experience. Uh, it does two things when you do that. It allows you to grow from it. It also allows you to have empathy for somebody else who is trying to do this. Uh, and you can, under, you can relate to them of why they're doing it and just kind of you know, come alongside of them and say, hey, I used to do that too, but this is what I did. And, and I, I learned from that because you know that, that canola oil they have in that let me tell you what canola oil does to you and you know and show them you know because for a lot of people if it's a seed oil most people believe in their mind that it's healthy yeah well that's what they're told by the marketing people <laughs> right but the reality of it the reality of it is it's not healthy for you and that's why you uh, being your best researcher, you being your best physician, going out there and doing the own, your, only, your own research so you understand what you are putting in your body. I think probably the, the best thing that anyone can do is start to take inventory of the food that you are eating and go look up the ingredients that you're eating and truly go out there and research to find out what those ingredients really are and the side effects they may be bringing you. And I think you will find out that, uh, you know, the food industry is not your friend. Mm -mm. No, the, the FDA and, and AHA, you know, all those agencies are not your friend either. And they're, they're the ones that are trying to tell you what's healthy and what's not healthy. And that's the scary part. It is the scary part because you're they're, literally they're trusting. You're, yeah, you're go, go ahead, Brian. Oh, I was just going to say, they're basically like a marketing branch for big food, you know? They're, it's like going to, it's like if you were a uh, security guard, like you need a security guard to work your bank and you're hiring a professional bank robber uh, and he's wearing a security shirt and you hire him to watch your bank because it says security on his shirt, but underneath that security shirt is a bank robber. So most people are buying their food because it says heart healthy or keto friendly, but you have to go deeper than what it says on the surface. You have to really look on there and see what they're really peddling as healthy food for you. And nine times out of 10, the healthy food that they're peddling to you is not healthy for you. It's only healthy to their bottom dollar that they're making off of you. Yeah. Healthy to their bank accounts. Correct. It grows their <laughs> bank account and grows your waistline and shortens your lifespan and your 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 ability to enjoy life. So 
the more you can do for yourself, the more you can educate yourself and indoctrinate yourself from what big pharma and, or the food industry markets to you, the better off you're going to be. And then you can be a, a success story. Not a success story is not even the word I'm looking for. You can be a mentor to other people because believe me, they're going to come to you and ask you, what are you doing, Brian? I mean, well, you look great. What are you doing? Your skin looks great. You, you look trim. What are you doing? He's, hey, I'm a carnivore. I eat, I eat meat. Hmm. Um, you get a chance to share your story. And that's really what this is all about. It's about us sharing what we're doing privately in our own lives. But by doing that privately in our own lives, we're able to manifest real health and not a stamp of approval by the American Heart Association or heart healthy snack uh, that's on almost all the junk food that's out there being peddled by the big food industry. Yeah, I, I like to lead by example. Exactly, exactly. And so talking about lead by example, um, it's that time again. So thank you guys for joining us for another Friday night of discussing keto and carnivore with you all. And as always, um, please email us if you have any questions or if you are having struggles, share your struggles, share your successes, and share your recipes. And we would love to hear from you. So until next Friday, we'll see you. And Brian, I'll let you say the last words. Oh, well, of course, I always have to say, eat your meat. Um, <laughs> But also, whoever's coming to the show, um, the, the kick show on Saturday night, I will see you there. There you go. Have a good night, everybody.